Hi there, my name is Vince from Mr Telephone and today I'm going to talk about how you can connect your Xbox One into another room. So basically in our house now we have the Xbox One in the main room and I've got TVs dotted around the place and uh, often my son likes to play Minecraft for hours on end or if I want to play a bit of Forza Horizons 2 and then my wife might want to watch something on Netflix or my daughter might want to watch the next step or something like that and then basically at the moment because the Xbox is only set up in this room then uh, I have to stop playing or my son has to stop playing. Now I was wondering if there's a way that you could move, not move the Xbox but play the Xbox in another room while still keeping it here. Now obviously you can pick up the Xbox and move it anywhere around the house but that can cause a bit of hassle and let's say if you only wanted to play for you know 15-20 minutes or so Personally, I couldn't be bothered to unplug everything, move it to another room and plug it in again. So I was wondering if there was a way of connecting it up via HDMI and USB. Now, the HDMI is not a problem. Everybody already knows about that, that you can just plug a HDMI lead in and then that will transmit the signal to another part of the house. But the problem is, is these wireless controllers. Because apparently on the Xbox 360, I never had that, but you can move quite a bit away from the console and they will still work. But with these, as soon as you get... I don't know, as soon as you seem to go into the next room, they drop the signal. So uh, it's fine if you just if your Xbox was on the other side of the stud wall and you just had to drill through the wall. But if you're going to a complete different room of the house, what's going to happen is your Xbox is just going to keep dropping the, uh, dropping the signal, which is going to drive you mad. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect up using HDMI leads and USB leads. Now, I have to apologise, I'm doing this video myself so it's going to be very shaky but I'm just going to show you to begin with some of the components you need. So at the moment your Xbox will be connected to your TV via a HDMI and you're using your controller wirelessly. Now when you do this setup you won't be able to use it wirelessly, at the, uh, you, will be, uh, you will have to use it via a USB to micro USB lead. So it's kind of going back in time a bit to the the old PlayStation 2 when you were connected via a wire, but it's not the end of the world because, as I say, this is only uh, this is only if occasionally you need to play it in another room. So basically, uh, what you're going to need is you're going to need a way of distributing the HDMI signal because you don't want to keep unplugging and plugging in the HDMI cable because yes you could just run a HDMI cable to another room and then every time you wanted to go to the other room you could unplug your TV HDMI lead and plug in your let's call it an extension HDMI lead into the back of the Xbox One but again that's going to drive you mad so just get yourself a splitter now in my house I've actually got HDMI wired everywhere and I've got Ethernet cables wired everywhere. But for this video I'm just going to trace them, trace them across the floor just to show you, you know, how to connect it up. But uh, these, these, these are good. Basically these are, uh, it's called a splitter here but really this is more of an amplifier because what you want is you want one with, for example, one input and maybe this one's got four outputs but Two outputs would be enough if you're just moving it to one room. What I intend to do is I want the flexibility of using my Xbox all over the house, you know, on every single TV. So uh, I will be wiring it up to four or three different TVs and then when my son gets older, when he has one in his bedroom, I'll be wiring it up to the fourth. But uh, what you want is, so you want uh, one with an input. So the Xbox will be going into here and then your normal TV will be going into here and then, for example, I'm going to be using the kitchen TV into this one here and then that could go off to a bedroom, back room, you know, whatever. But a lot of the time on eBay you'll see these and they're called splitters but what they actually are is they will have like four inputs or three inputs to one output. So the idea is you can plug in your Xbox, your DVD, your, your uh, uh, set-top box into it and then the output will go to the, uh, go to the TV but these are the other way around, so they're often called splitters, but really it's an amplifier because it gets the signal and then it amplifies it out to the different outputs. So you're going to need to get one of these. Again, if you do go to uh, mrtelephone.co.uk, that will bring you to my My Mate Vince website. And although I don't sell these, I, uh, I will link to sellers that do sell them on either Amazon or eBay. So check it out. So you need one of them. I think I paid roughly £30 for that. But you can get them. You can get them cheaper. You will be able to get maybe a two-port one for a for a tenner. Okay, so you're going to need them. Now, obviously, you're going to need a long HDMI lead. Now, 
I've just got two five meter ones. So for this video now, I'm, uh, I'm gonna extend it up to 10 meters away. Uh, I'll tell you why 10 meters, because I actually tried it, although the HDMI is fine over a longer distance, the, uh, the controller seemed to lose, because this USB I think is only five volts, and it doesn't seem to have the power to make it go any further than, I mean, I tried a 10 meter Cat6 lead and it works fine. I tried a 16 meter lead and it didn't work. Although the light came on, it, it, uh, it wouldn't seem to, it didn't seem to sync up, it didn't seem to connect up, so I think there's not, I think there's too much voltage drop, so perhaps somebody that knows more about USBs will, can put a comment in the, uh, in the boxes below. I, I think maybe if you were to get a powered USB, some kind of powered USB hub, then that would boost the signal, but all I'm using is basically just a, a normal 10 meter Cat6 lead connected up there's no power there it's taken all its power from the xbox itself and i think that's what the problem is so i'm sure if you were to get a powered usb hub then that would probably put more power down the line so it could travel for further but this definitely works fine over 10 meters and 10 meters is quite a long way especially if you're going to do it externally then you know you can get to a lot of your house over 10 meters or if you're going under the floorboards then i mean if you go around the door frames and stuff 10 meters it will get eaten up pretty quickly but if you're going under the floorboards 10 meters will get you to you know it will actually get you to quite a few rooms. I know it doesn't seem like it, but 10 meters will go pretty far. Okay, and also, that's just a 10 meter lead. You've then got this uh, Xbox power lead, you know, the USB to micro. That's another two and a half, nearly three meters. So that adds it up. And then my little connecting lead is another three quarters of a meter. So it all adds up. So, so I, think you're, I, think, I think you're gonna be okay. So basically, I've got a 10 meter HDMI. In this instance, I just joined together two 5 meter HDMIs, but as I say, the HDMI side's not a problem, so if you want to buy yourself a 15 meter HDMI lead, you know, that won't be a problem, but here I'm using a 10 meter one, so they're the HDMIs. You also need a shorter HDMI, so the 10 meter one's going to be going from the splitter to the new location, in, in this instance it's going to go to the kitchen, but then you also need a shorter HDMI lead to go from the splitter into your Xbox, yeah? Now, if your house is already wired up for Cat5e, then you're probably gonna have faceplates, sorry, Cat5e or Cat6, you're probably gonna have faceplates dotted around the house, in which case then you won't need to use these couplers because you're gonna be plugging in your patch leads straight into the, uh, straight into the faceplates. But because I'm using a patch lead and the patch leads end in a RJ45 male, I've gotta then connect up little couplers to make them into female. But obviously, like I just said, if your house has face plates, like I've got down, down here. Yeah, see little face plates down there? Then you won't need to, you won't need to get these little couplers. Yeah, okay, so you're gonna need to get yourself a couple of little couplers. And also what you're gonna to need to get, you need to have a way of turning that USB ports into RJ45. So these are handy little things. These are basically, there's a female USB there to a male RJ45 there. So what you, you're gonna need two of these, one for each side, yeah? And then what you're gonna need is, you're gonna need a, a male to male USB lead. So this is the male bit. You're going to need a lead with two of these. Now, I personally couldn't find one today. So basically, I'm using a male to female, and then I'm using a male to male adapter. See that there? So basically, by plugging that into there, I'm using, that becomes a male to male, yeah? But that's a bit of a faff. You know, you could just, uh, just buy yourself a male to male lead. I, I checked on eBay. Again, I don't sell them, but, people selling them for a few quid, so they're not expensive. So get yourself one of them, a male to male, then you don't have to be mucking about with adapters. So basically, when you plug in this little RJ45, what you've got now is, you've got a male USB to a male RJ45, which can either plug straight into your faceplate, or straight into the little RJ45 coupler, which then your patch lead will go into. So. All this is doing is it's shoving this USB signal, this little five volt signal, down the pairs in the RJ45. You can also got nice little uh, RJ45 
you know, like uh, USB extenders down RJ45 or USB to RJ45 converters. And uh, again, they're not expensive. I think they're about ten pound for 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 a pair of them. I've just done this today just to show you the different the different ways of doing it. All you're doing is converting this connection here into this connection here. That's all. That's all you're doing. So that's going to be this end, and this is going to plug into your Xbox. I'm going to show you all this all in a minute. I'm actually going to take the camera off and show you all the connections. But then at the other end, it's a little bit more straightforward because normally this this is your the Xbox controllers are micro USBs, so you've got a normal USB there and a micro USB here. You'll probably have these leads around the house without re even realising it because a lot of phones take these micro, a lot of mobile phones take these micro USB. It's not a mini, a mini USB was the slightly older connection. This is micro, so it's pretty, it's pretty small. And the Xbox One controller takes the micro USB. So what we'll do is, again, we we'll just plug in the USB there. And now instead of plugging this into the Xbox, we're going to be plugging into this, this into the other side of the patch lead. So, or the faceplate in your kitchen, or in your bedroom, or wherever you're running it to. So again, plug in the little coupler there, plug that into there. And now, when I plug that into my Xbox controller, it's taking its power all down the patch lead from the Xbox into the Xbox controller. So that's that side. So now I'm actually going to take the camera off and I'm actually going to show you it all connecting up so you know you know where everything goes and then I'll do an example of it working. Okay, so just to show you at the moment, this is uh, you know, this is normal, just this is the, the wireless, I've got my batteries in it at the moment, and you can see it working around the place. Okay, so what we're gonna do is let's take this camera off. Now apologies for the shakiness. So to begin with, we need to unplug the HDMI out to TV, yeah? And we need to plug in the new short HDMI lead, yeah? So this white HDMI lead will go into, make sure the, uh, the amplifier's off, this HDMI lead will go into the Input, yeah. Put that in there. Okay, so that's now into the input. I've managed to turn that off with my leg. Right, so that's now into the input, and now the lead, the HD original Xbox HDMI lead that goes to my TV in this room. Let's connect it to one of these. Doesn't matter which one. I'm going to connect it to number one. Okay. Now the one that's going to go off to my kitchen, I'm going to connect. That's these ones here. I'm going to connect to another output, which is going to be into output two. Plug that in there. There we go. So as you can see, we've got the Xbox feeding this via the white cable into the input, and then this will amplify the signal and shove it out to output one, two. Number one is going to the TV in the, the main room here. And number two is going to the will be going to the kitchen. I'll drag that across in a minute. So that's the HDMI side done on this end. So now we need to do the USB, the USB side. So if you have a look, there's various USBs. There's a USB down here, and there's also USBs here. Okay, so I'm just going to use the one at the side. So what you need is, this is where you need to plug in your USB male to male, but again I haven't got a USB male to male, so I'm just plugging in the male to female. So that goes in there, and then I'm going to use my little adapter to turn it into a male. So there we go, so we ended up with a male. Now you need to convert it to Ethernet, so I'm using this little adapter here. See, what, what I think I will do, and I'll probably do this on another video, when I actually install this properly in my house, I'm just going to cut this lead here, this USB lead, and I'm going to crimp on an RJ45 plug, and then I won't have all this faff with all this rubbish, you know, because we're losing a little bit of signal. Every time we go through here and here, we're losing signal. So I reckon if I was to put an RJ45 straight onto that, maybe I might then get away with 15 metres. But again, if somebody knows more about USB, please comment down below, because I'm pretty sure a powered hub would, would allow you to do it more than 15 metres. Okay, so there we go. Can you see that now? So we've got the USB from here coming out, and we're ending up with uh, 
RJ45, which when I'm finished will be getting plugged straight in to one of my RJ45 ports here. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just using a patch lead so you can understand it more. So I've used a, a 10 meter Cat6 patch lead here, and this is solid copper. Again, I would advise always using solid copper rather than the CCA. I've done a video on that, and you can learn about that in a separate video. But CCA is copper clad aluminium, and there's a lot more loss on the signal. Okay, so we're gonna plug this into, plug this into here. Apologies for all the shaking off this video. Okay, so now we've got our HDMI connected over there, and our USB connected here, yeah? So what we're going to have to then do is connect up the other end of this. It's probably going to end up in a big knot. But plug in my little RJ45 coupler here. These are only very cheap couplers. I have a lot better ones in my eBay shop, which are actually rated at Cat5e. Okay, I've just plugged in the RJ45 to USB here. And now I'm plugging in the original Xbox lead that came with the little charger, you know when you get the rechargeable ones, so if you're putting batteries in all the time. But any USB, this is just a, a USB mail to uh, uh, a micro USB. Again, you can get these on eBay, I don't sell them, but you can get them for a few quid. They're not expensive at all. Okay, so, that's that. Now, let's get our controller. Get the ones now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the batteries out of this just to show you that it is working off the USB. And let's plug in the USB into it. Hopefully it will work and then we can go into the kitchen, plug it into the TV there. Now, one second, where's my TV? Just put it onto the right channel of the TV, it seems to have turned itself off. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I didn't have the HDMI splitter on, did I? So turn that on there. And now you will see output one will light up. Okay, here we go. So, press A to start. It's just asking me to log in, just give me a minute. Sign in, I should say. No, it's just, uh, it's just loading up. This game takes a little while to load up. So what I'm gonna do is, while that's loading up, I'm gonna drag these leads. I'll start with this one and then I'll come back and let's drag them both at the same time. Drag these leads over to the kitchen, which is gonna be the second TV. Right, okay, so I'm in, the, I'm in the kitchen now and I'm gonna plug the HDMI into the kitchen TV. See here I've got everything wired up already so I can do it, uh, you know, I can do it nice and neatly. Okay, so plug the HDMI in there, and hopefully, well there we go. Right, so your Xbox signal is now coming out of the kitchen, and if you have a look at the controller, can you see my lights on? Yeah? Now, yeah. I can't, uh, can't drive it one-handed, I'm afraid. Yeah, there you go, so it's all working. Doesn't appear to be any lag or anything, it seems to be working nice, but then again, I'm not a very good gamer, so maybe those professionals out there would notice the difference, but to me it just seems completely instant. Yeah? Okay. And normally when I come into this room, I don't have the signal on my Xbox One controller, it's dropped out. Okay, so that's... Uh that's it and the vibration everything works as it should do so uh, and also if you come back into the other room you'll see here that it's working on this TV as well 
Yeah, I don't know if there's any particular need to have it working in two rooms. I don't know if it would be of any benefit, but uh, the idea is that you can just have normal TV on in this room. So, put that to normal TV. Because if you're wearing a glossy, yeah, okay, so lip line somebody else can watch that, and then you can come in here and you can play your Xbox without having to move your Xbox controller. Now, I know that seemed like a bit of a, a bit of a faff, but uh, if you once you get it set up properly, once you get it set up properly, then uh, yeah, I can't see having much of a problem with it. I mean, what I'm going to do is I will do it all down my HDMI wiring and. Uh, yeah, I'll see, see, see how we go, but I think that would be quite handy and then it saves the arguments in the house. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you've got any comments about it or if you've got any better ideas of how to do it, maybe uh, uh, a better way of doing the USB so you can get a further a signal further, then please comment down below. If you need any of these products, please go to either mymatevince.com or mrtelephone.co.uk and that will bring you through to my website and then that will link you through to my eBay shop where I sell most of these little connectors and leads and HDMI leads and stuff. Okay, thanks very much for your time. Take care. Please subscribe. Bye now.